Hey gum people! Man, I've been wanting to do this one for a while. So, uh, I got my 300 black out because I'm going to pull the bolt out. And I just wanted to talk about a little pin that a person was talking about. So we got the bolt out here. We'll lay the gun over here. I'm going to take this bolt out. Rick, you should always take the magazine out before you take the... Shut up, big crybabies. And we'll take this one and put it aside. And I'm going to talk about the Glock too, so we'll go ahead and get the Glockster out here too. Rick, you shouldn't use this holster. That was the guy that shot himself for doing that because his finger... That's because he's an idiot. My finger ain't on the damn trigger when I pull this gun. Everybody talks smack about this holster. This also, when I'm riding my motorcycle, I carry it on my side. And, uh, I ain't never pulled the damn trigger from using this holster. It ain't the holster, you big dummy. It's the people using it. But, I digress. Let's, uh, get that out here. We're going to talk about all kind of funky stuff. Alrighty, so, why do I have all these bolts out? Let's go with that. Alright, let's get down and dirty. Here's how this, how, here's how this event morphed. Uh, does everybody see this little pin right here? Let me uh, see if I can maybe get this light. So it will, does that help? I don't know if that helps or not, people, but... So the little pin right there is what we're looking at. Probably got this light on too. I don't know if that'll give us more light or not. That blocks the light. I got more damn lights in here and people always complaining. You don't have enough lights. You need more lights. Whatever. All right. So this little bitty pin right here, which I'm going to try to pull out with my finger, but I haven't had this one out a lot, so I might have to use something else. Used to be able to pull them out the finger. See the little pin there? I mean, this is crazy. I'd never heard this before in my life. So, this pin, <laughs> I'm at the gun show and I'm just kind of cruising around looking at shit. <laughs> and I'm, I'm listening, you know, at the gun show, you always got people talking about stupid shit. And I look at them and I'm like, I mean, they're just giving out some crazy advice. And I'm like, who the hell told, I mean, I don't say anything, but I'm just like, man, there's some great misinformation out there. They got people believing all this shit. But, so, uh, this pin right here, if I get a good look at it. Man, I wish I had one more. Hang on, I'll get one more light over here. That might work. <laughs> Does that help that, that pin at all? Get this a little bit lower here. Right there. See that little sucker? Now, when I'm talking vertical or horizontal, I'm talking horizontal this way, and I'm talking vertical this way. Now, this guy was explaining to somebody that most people put this pin in wrong because it should always be vertical and not horizontal. And so when I heard him saying this, I kind of like, what the hell is he talking about? So I kind of stopped. I start looking at another gun, but I'm listening with one of my halfway hearing ears. So supposedly he says when you put this in, if you put it horizontal, the pin can get damaged if you put it vertical it's stronger. So that's how I got on this video. I, According to that guy, this is wrong, this is right. The bolt sits like this, the pin should be vertical. Now, this pin is supposedly hardened steel and it's got two, I can't tell if it's focusing it or not on it. It's got two little pins there. Okay, I kind of saw that a little bit. And so, he's saying, now, anybody that knows what this pin does, it holds in the firing pin. Wow, that firing pin's kind of dirty. I should have checked my equipment before this. Or I'd be like, you don't clean your gun. Shut up. My damn gun's usually always clean. But, for some reason, <laughs> somebody snuck in and put a little dirt on this. So, I must have fired it and forgot to uh, give it a wipe down. I mean, it's not that dirty. It wiped right off, so it's not like... Call carbon up, but it's 
blacker than I like it. So when this pin goes in the bolt, it sits right in between here. So according to this guy, if the pin's in up and down, that's correct. If it's like that, it's wrong. According to him, this is stronger, this is weaker. And I'm like, man, that don't make no damn sense to me. So I go over to Buck's. I'm like, Buck, you ever heard that shit? And he goes, hell no, that guy's full shit. So he looks at it and he goes, no. He goes, it doesn't make a damn bit of difference. So here's what Buck said. He said, this is too lightweight. It doesn't get enough force. It's only moving in between a little bit when a hammer hits it to make the, the, the bullet fire. Comes out that little hole. So he goes, I don't, he goes, there's not enough, this doesn't create enough force to bend this because this is hard and still. So he goes, even if it could bend it, it's not heavy enough and it doesn't create enough force to bend it. So it makes no difference. And not that I didn't trust Buck, but my buddy, uh, his brother is like 70 years old. He's been an engineer working on parts and stresses and a large company, graduated some great engineering degree, whatever. He's forgotten more about engineering than I'll know. And he says, uh, so I go to him and I talk to him. I go, dude, does this make sense to you? Is this strong? Is this? He goes, I have to see it. At first, when I explained it to him, he said, oh, yeah, like this would be stronger because it's like if you put two two-by-fours on top of each other, they're not going to bow. And for some reason, I couldn't explain it. This isn't like two, this would be two two-by-fours side-by-side. This would be two two-by-fours on top, but the pressure is coming this way. It's not coming down on two two-by-fours. But both people, actually three people I talked to when I explained it, all gave me the two-by-four. Well, if you got two two-by-fours like this, stand in the middle, they're going to bow. But if you put them on top of each other, they're going to be stronger. I'm like, yeah, but this, he's saying is stronger like this, but it's not getting pressure to where it's doubled. It's getting pressure on the side. So anyway, after talking to this engineer, he goes, uh, he says, no, it's negligible. He's full of crap. And Buck happened to have four or five bolts from the factory. Not that it matters, but they were all like this. Uh, none of them were like this from the factory. Does that matter? I think it's just the way to go in. I've never paid any attention to this pen. I've just shoved it in. Uh, the guy that was explaining it said he saw when they put it in the wrong way, one of these pins had flared out and bowed, and that's because it was put in wrong and a firing pin hit it and bowed it. I think what happened is on some of these pins, they're not equal. This one happens to be equal and kind of flared down a little bit. Some of them, one shorter. And if they don't come out the other side of that hole and both fit in there on the other side of the hole and you only have one and they force it or bang it because it won't go in, you know, like right now, it's kind of hard. If I take a hammer and try to bang that in, I'll end up bending one of those pins. So normally what I do is I just tend to spin it while putting pressure until it goes in. And I go back and forth. And if that doesn't work, which it normally does, not working now because I said it normally works. Then what I do is I'll get a small screwdriver and when the pin is inside I will come up and push one of these pins like so and then it will help it go in. So while it's in here, after I have the firing pin in, I turn it sideways like so. Hopefully it's coming out on a video. I got all these lights on. I can't see shit. So I put it in like that. If it won't go in, I will take a screwdriver, reach in here, and just press sideways like so. I'm going to be pressing. Here's what it's going to look like inside. I'm pressing on this end to get it through these holes over here. And I'll just reach in here and I'll push. And then it'll go right in. And I'll see if it'll work on camera. La 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 la. Play Jeopardy music. Do 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 do. Yeah, it worked. Okay, so uh, <laughs> so that got me to the next video. So I'm talking to the engineer dude who said that it doesn't make difference, and he works with parts, and he explained all the stresses and all that shit. 
And he goes, no, dude. He goes, as a matter of fact, he has, if you're around Houston, he has an office to where all the milling and dyes and everything to build your own AR, your lowers. You bring in a box of steel, and he rents the place out for 30 bucks an hour. And you can build your own AR, drill your holes, do everything, no serial number. You build it at his place. He charges you 30 bucks an hour to use all the CNC machines and stuff. If I can remember, I'll put his info if you're in the Houston area. Uh, so, I'm, I'm kind of leery to put his info because someone will be stalking him. You know Rick Gore, that asshole. <laughs> All right. So, we're talking about this. And the guy, the engineer that works on all these parts, he goes, dude, so I had this bolt here, and you see how it's kind of a little shiny right here? Well, it was shiny right here, too. Notice this bolt is kind of, um, it almost looks charcoal. Well, it didn't. It looked like a normal black bolt like this before. And I sprayed this molly mist on it, okay? So this is a dry film lubricant. But it's like freaking paint. I mean, it literally goes on like paint. And I'll paint something here in a second with it. I'll, I'll, I'll squirt. But but it's it's dry. And it's it's basically, you can see it's coming off. I have sprayed this whole thing down and it's put a coat of molly on it. So the engineer was saying, dude, you need to get you some CV molly. CV joint grease with molly. It's got to have molly. Molly... Do, Scylla, U, Phi, D, whatever. Whatever it is. So, I, and I, I got this on Amazon. It's just a black grease. Maybe it's gray. I don't know. Whatever. Doesn't take much. I mean, I just put a very little bit. But he said, the engineer who's been working, he's 70 years old, been working since he was, you know, graduated college in engineering for companies and stress and machining. He goes, Molly is the best invention of our lifetime. He's like, this shit is so good on friction areas. He goes, when you put molly on something, it literally bonds to the metal so well that they've taken apart engines and done studies on engines on friction and wear. And when the engine was put together using with molly on the parts, after 100,000 miles inside the engine, after 100,000 miles of wear, they still find molly penetrating and in the steel. So he said, molly is the greatest defriction, lubricant, whatever, he goes, dude, he goes, if I were you, I'd put a little molly on any of these shiny surfaces where things are rubbing. He goes, just get you some of that molly CV. And he said, just put a little bit of molly on there. And he goes, rub it in. And he goes, it goes into the steel. And he goes, it bonds with the metal and it's in there forever. And he goes, it's not going to come off. He goes, even when you wipe it off, he goes, it's still there. He goes, you can't wipe it hard enough to make it go off. He goes, it's bonded into that metal, and it's created a less of a friction between these two places. And he goes, if you want something to operate where there's constant friction or constant velocity, hint, CV, constant velocity. Woo, fancy words. He goes, Molly is the best grease out there. Now, I've rubbed this pretty good, and I'm getting black stuff off, and I'm still getting black stuff off. And according to him, there is molly in this metal. And, I mean, when I do this, it makes it smoother. Uh, I don't know if it looks smoother, but I'm telling you, it it, it feels smoother. Maybe that's because I got a little molly on I'll use a finger without molly. Ricky flipped us off. I'll be quite you big cry, babies. Uh, so, he was like, dude, any place you see friction, where you have friction wearing, like right here I got shiny, he said. He goes, rub a little molly on that. He goes, he goes, that he goes, that molly will be there forever. He goes, it'll just bond into the metal. And he goes, it really decreases friction and it increases your reliability. So I was like, okay, so we're talking about this, of course, drinking at a party, and we're all sitting around bullshitting. And one dude goes, dude, I got Molly Miss. When I put together, I don't know what he does, race cars, bearings, rebuilds, motorcycle, whatever the hell he does, he goes, man, I spray all my shit down with Molly Miss. I go, what the hell is Molly Miss? He goes, I got a can. Let me go get it. So he goes and gets it, and he comes back, and I spray down my bolt. <laughs> I go, screw it. What the hell? Uh, I even sprayed down a little bit on the gun. You can tell right here I got some on the gun, and it hasn't come off. Now, I think I can take soap and water 
and get it off. But I've tried to oil it off with a little oil and it ain't come off. It's still there. And I'm rubbing with oil. You see how black this is? And the molly's still there. That molly mist is still there. It's all in this area. So you might want to be careful when you're putting it on that you don't overspray something or you just got to clean it. It's not going to hurt it. It's not paint. But man, it really... So I went ahead and molly misted all this because this has friction and this rubs. And I wipe it off and it's still there. Now, because you're using this molly mist, I can spray oil over it and it's still... The molly's still in the metal, but I still get the lubricant. It lubricates over it. So I was like, hey, that's pretty cool. So I'm not a big fan on how it makes changes a bolt. I'm gonna I'm gonna do part of this bolt here. Now this bolt is what the hell is this called? I don't even know what the hell it's called. Um shit. Somebody will know. Ooh, that is dirty too. Damn, I guess I have to shut my 300 blackout more than I shot, I thought. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and spray just a little molly on here, but this boat I think is chromanium, chrome, whatever the hell they're making bolts they always make. But you can tell it's got wear right here. So I'm going to put some of this molly on it because I think this goes in smoother and comes off. This almost acts like a paint. And some of you may like it. Some of you may say it's not as good. This says to use when you're putting it in areas that don't have oil, I think is what it says. Um, shit, I don't have my little reading glasses. I can't read this freaking fine print. Can you read that? You can pause the screen and read it. <laughs> and you can blow it up or pause it, whatever. That's, that's the stuff. All right? I'm sure if you go to Amazon and punch it up, it'll probably give all this information. So I just want to spray something so you can see it. I'm going to go ahead, since my bolt has some shiny parts on the old on the old Glock bolt, I'm going to spray it. But I'm covering everything else up because I don't want the overspray. So here we go. See what it looks like before? I don't remember it looking like that before. That's pretty oily. And it smells like spray paint. See how it's turning the rag black? See how I put all that on there? Now I'm getting a buzz because it smells like spray paint. See how I kind of grade it up? It put all that molly mist in there, but it's got a good coat of molly on it now. And now if I want to oil over it, I can. Now, there have been people, and when I was screwing around, these two bolts were just sitting around, and I put a little bit of this molly on them and just rub the molly on the bullet and I rubbed it on the brass too just for GP and I know people are going to be like man you're using that molly like you're using that freaking what's that, what's that liquid stuff I was using on wood hell I can't think of it now that was a cap um, anyway I painted my uh, thing with it so I put molly on this not only did it clean it up supposedly it bonded into this copper jacket here and I will get more velocity out of this. I would love somebody with one of those little things that tests the speed of the bullet. What's it called? Chromatogram or whatever the hell it is. Where you shoot the two bullets through the little arrows and it tells you how fast the bullet's going. I would like to see if you treated a bullet with this Molly Mist and this Molly CV and shot three bullets. If, if you got more velocity out of this. Rumor has it, you will get more velocity. It decreases friction so much that you get more speed, uh, which is pretty easy thing to do if it's true. But I don't know if it's true. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put some of this CV grease, this uh, grease on 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 some of these parts that I just mollied, and I'm gonna clean these up and uh, put them back together. But I just thought I would share that. I thought the uh, the little pin being sideways was freaking crazy. I was like, I never heard of something. I wonder if it's true. After doing a little research, 
I don't have any facts. I didn't do any stretch tests. I'm just telling you what people who work around metals and who have engineering degrees, degrees tell me. So I'm passing it on. I don't think it matters which way your damn pin goes. I think this CV joint grease is a pretty good idea. I Like I said, anybody with one of those uh, bullet speed chasers, bullet radar, <laughs> that could test the bullet, fire three bullets, see if they're all the same, fire three more with this, and see if you get increased would be pretty cool. Uh, I don't see why you couldn't do the inside of your barrel with this. Now, somebody said if you put this inside your barrel, because it bonds in the metal, it makes it bigger, and then it'll be too tight, and you can... No, look, I'm not talking about squirting a whole damn tube in there. I'm talking about putting something on the end of a... You know, I put a little bit here, and I put that much in my freaking barrel, around the barrel here, and then I took a patch, and I rubbed the patch through it. And I get black on the patch, and it's coating the interior with a little molly coat. I'm not, I'm not talking about increasing or decreasing the barrel diameter by building and putting that. Now I ask him, I go, dude, once I put this molly on, are you telling me I never need to put it on again? He goes, I'm telling you, it'll never all go away and there will always be some on there. But he goes, I would probably say after maybe 10 cleanings, you could reapply. 10 to 20 cleanings. He goes, if you want to, you know, make it a little bit more slicker and reduce a little bit more friction, he goes, put a little bit more on after 20 cleanings, I think was what his final thing was. So he goes, once you put it on, it's there forever. It bonds with the metal. And he goes, it is the great friction eliminator. So that's my take. You can hate on me or say I'm full of crap or say the people I ask are full of crap. What I'd really like is some people that either know and have tested it or agree with it. And I don't know what the hell happened to this bolt, man. This thing kind of looks dirty. <laughs> oh, it ain't that damn dirty. A little bit of oil, I'll probably wipe that off. It ain't even carboned up. If it was carboned up, it wouldn't come off this easy. Well, maybe it needs a little scraping. Whatever. Clean my damn gun. Don't be coming here cracking on me about cleaning my gun. All right, so that's the scoop. I got a little buzz. Shit, from that molly mist. Uh, that's what it looks like, people. Um... Maybe if I zoom in at a distance, you can tell where the molly was at and how it changed the, uh, changed the color of the barrel. Yeah, see, it's not going to focus in. It's hard to get a good focus. It's probably about as best I can get. All right, so... It is what it is, just passing it on. Well, in that there.